So for 12 months and counting, the only thing and the one thing standing between this administration and their goal of ending access to health care and reproductive rights and safe and legal abortion has been millions of de determined women. And the women, that's right, you did it. You're the ones who did it. Joining us now is Cecile Richards, the president of Planned Parenthood. Uh, and Cecile, so here we are one year later, and it feels, especially when you look at what you were doing in Las Vegas yesterday, as if that the Women's March has now entered the, the operational strategic phase beyond, far beyond just the raised voice and protest phase. Oh, absolutely, Lawrence. And I think this, this entire last year has been women have been at the forefront of the resistance, certainly in protecting Planned Parenthood access and protecting Obamacare. They've been the ones calling Congress, showing up in pink hats at town hall meetings. And now what we're seeing is, of course, that they're filing for office and they're, they're focused on the 2018 elections. And it's really been fascinating to see that I think in the last 12 months, women have become the most important political force in America. You know, last year uh, during the march, I was doing live coverage here on Joy Reid's show, and then I was able to go outside right over there and stand on Fifth Avenue and watch this amazing march go by. And, and I was able to check it out at many different points, uh, hours on it. Yet, uh, uh, Saturday in Los Angeles, uh, I started walking from sort of the stage uh, par part where everyone can hear everything that's being said. And as you walked farther and farther away, the nature of the event changed. There were these tents, and I was saying, what is all that? That's all the organizing. This was all this registering to vote. And they weren't listening to a word that was said on the stage because they were so far away they couldn't hear it. But it was just as busy in the business of voter registration and political strategy occurring in those tents. Right. Oh, no, absolutely. I feel like a year ago it was a demonstration. This year it has been its determination. It is focused on, on the elections. And we saw in Nevada yesterday the Planned Parenthood Action Fund had their own table. They were registering yeah. voters, you know, every other organization registering voters at, with a keen focus. And that's what is really exciting. I think, you know, I've always felt that marching was great, showing up at town hall meetings was important, calling Congress, but voting, that's where we really get the job done. And we're now seeing, of course, Emily's list says, you know, they have more than 25,000 women who've raised their hand to run for office. We saw the first Latinas elected to the House of Delegates in Virginia, women determining the race in Alabama and last week in Wisconsin. I think women are feeling their power in a new way. and It is incredibly energizing and exciting. And there's a stunning gender gap in the polls in terms of the congressional election. We're going to take a look at this on the question of who would you vote for? And it's just generic Democrat, Republican women, 57% uh, of uh, vote for Democrat. I think we're going to get it up on the screen here. Uh, uh, men, only 44%. So, so this is the women, how they would vote. 57% uh, would vote uh, for Democrats. 31% would vote for Republicans. Uh, the male uh, version of, of that is 44% of men would vote for Democrats. 48% uh, would vote for Republicans. So there is a gigantic gigantic uh, gender gap uh, f in favoring the Democrats here. Absolutely. And we saw that in Virginia in a race that was supposed to be incredibly close. If you remember, the governor's race was going to be so tight. Uh, Ralph Northam ended up winning that race by, I think, 10 points. The gender gap was 22 points with mm -hmm. women. I mean, women absolutely are dominating these races. And I don't think it's by chance. It's because what we have seen from this administration and definitely this Congress is an attack on women, on women's rights, on Planned Parenthood from day one. And I think women are figuring out that they have to not, not only affect the people that are in power, they have to change who's in power. Uh, and, I, and I really do believe they will. Women now, you know, they're, they're politically organizing, they're grassroots organizing, they're culturally organizing, and I think it's unstoppable. You said something on Saturday that really struck me. You said you've been an organizer all your life and you always wondered, uh, what if you planned a revolution and everybody came? <laughs> I mean, uh, and anyone who's been at protests knows what you mean. There's there's a, the, the, you have a kind of representative group out there right. uh, uh, representing a much larger group. And here you have uh, this gigantic turnout that we haven't seen before. Well, and it's interesting is that you probably remember, too, that a lot of the, the uh, sort of political uh, smart people after the last march said, well, that's just that was a day and maybe mm -hmm. didn't mean anything. What I actually think it was, it was just the beginning. And, and literally, I mean, every single town I go to, whether it's speaking for Planned Parenthood or whatever the event is, there's a new women's group that started just out of whole cloth. Women who are now, you know, meeting on Sunday nights, meeting over over supper parties, meeting at their
their book club and they're taking action and they totally understand that they can do better than who's in office now. Uh, and there's, we can already see an effect, and that is this fleeing for the exits by Republicans in the Congress, including these senior uh, chairs of committees who are saying, I'm not going to try to run for re-election in this environment. No, absolutely. What's funny, you know, when my mom ran for governor of Texas, uh, you know, she was always frustrated that women waited until they were, you know, had all the right degrees yes, or right, right at the right time and the, or someone asked them. And I think women are now looking at who's in office, looking at who's in Congress and saying, you know what, I could do a better job than that guy that's in there. I think there's now 490 women who have filed a run for Congress. It's historic. And it may be that Paul Ryan, he hasn't said it, but he, it looks like he will not run for re-election this year. He knows where this wave is, is headed. I happen to know some women in Kenosha, Wisconsin, who are ready, ready for that race. <laughs> so I think it's going to be exciting. I think women are going to be competitive in races that no one ever expected before. Well, it's becoming, we're going to have to stop saying that because these polls are telling us that women are going to be competitive in races. And so now we can expect it. Cecile Richards, thank you very much for so joining us. So good to us. see you, really Lawrence. Great to have you here. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.